Well, good morning, everybody. I hope everyone is having a very, very nice day. Uh, it's early here in the Philippines. Been up for a long time. Melinda's out jogging with some family and neighbors right now. And it has just been a very wonderful morning. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning out here on the beach, as you see. Got two of my nephews are sitting outside <laughs> just hanging out here yeah i hadn't even opened the gates yet but they are here waiting good morning to the light good morning moi moi <laughs> look at these faces isn't that two handsome boys that's two handsome boys this is what i get to wake up to all the time around here is all these wonderful kiddos yeah <laughs> I love these boys. So let's look out here at the beach real quick. Let's look at this. Water is like glass. Boy, if I was skiing, man, would I want to be out there skiing on that right now. Man, morning time is the best time to ski in water sport as far as I'm concerned. Water's a little bit more chilly, but man, it's wonderful. Look at that. I'm hoping for a very successful day today. Project today will be setting all the steel now inside of the water tank, underground water tank, cistern, and begin forming it. So yesterday we got all the hollow block in place. As much as I cuss it, I know I keep repeating this in the videos, I do not like this hollow block. Even as I watch them put it together, how easy they could tap it with a hammer and it split. Literally, not even a hammer, just a trowel and a minimum tap. It splits. But it was a absolutely wonderful, sacrificial uh, type of material I could put it behind there. Better than plywood. So this will be a double wall tank now. This will be the outer wall. We're gonna cast pour an inner wall. I know it's a lot of explanation, but I just really want you to understand what we're doing. I'm not just building a hollow block tank. Well, I know that's gonna be the main thing today, but I'm sure we'll get into other things as well. We always do. And we'll see what those will be here in just a bit. They're back filling all the gaps around this hollow block form wall that we made and uh, we got a couple braces to hold that wall spread out good while the cement cured cured enough to hold strength go ahead man and so we'll be pulling all that out of the way here after a while we'll give a little bit a little bit more time set up a little harder and the guys are going to begin bending and forming all the steel grid that's going to go inside of there then inside the the restroom out here, outdoor restroom. I pulled all of this electrical before we poured the ceiling in here. I put all this electrical in everywhere and we covered it over with those little plastic lids. Then we pulled the forms. The boxes are just instant there poured inside the concrete. I've got some old videos. You can go back to that when I did it. So it's all cast into the creek. Everywhere is cast into the creek really like this bright little room I need to go pick him up I think about four more tiles so he can finish this one little spot over the door and then he'll have it 100% done on that no don't look don't worry about how high just get the bottom so and then we'll put extensions i just want to make sure that there's not a joint in the corner down there but in the side, sir, I know. on the joint. side we're going to curve too but then, uh, no corners i don't want no joints in the steel on the corners but, but the steel is not, no, sir. we'll bend it around yes. bend it around the the steel. just like yesterday you know how you made that yesterday in here yes. going around the same so that it bends on the corners just like Marvin did yesterday for these in the bottom. So I'm in here in this CR 
Joel, he was going to go ahead and start pulling all the wiring. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'll map this out because I'm the one that pulled all this conduit in here and have it in my head exactly how I want it laid out. Mike's blowing a horn outside. I bet they're trying to sell fish. <laughs> okay, bro, go ahead. Actually, you can probably use the electrical wire and it'd be better than the steel wire. It's more soft. Okay. So, we can't get one piece of wire through the conduit in there. So I'm trying to tell Joel you can use a piece of nylon, uh, something like this little plastic bag. It comes from a little supermarket or something tie that plastic around on it right here and we'll see if this works now I'm gonna stuff this inside that conduit and on the other end I'm gonna pull a vacuum cleaner on it and should be able to suck it through Set that vacuum cleaner down, go on. So now let's tie something else soft. Not the wire, it's too stiff. Let's tie the electrical to this and we'll pull it on through. And you see, there it is pulled through on the nylon. Deal is, there's a there's an elbow here, an elbow coming around, and they're long sweep elbows, and then one going down uh, through that roof right there. Because it had to be all set over away from this window to come down the wall here. So, uh, Having to go through several elbows right there is making it a little tough, but probably snagging on the edges of the PVC inside the elbow. So there it is. If y'all have never done that before, I know many of you probably have, just tie some good strong fishing line with a piece of uh, plastic on the end and vacuum cleaner that through. So a couple of local kids here helping uh, clean my truck just trying to give them some little task and all they don't have school right now with the way things are classes suspended and they're sitting with nothing to do so you know as teenagers we always took on little tasks you know little things to make little extra monies um just kind of help out or have a little pocket money so they were excited to have the chance to clean my truck so i come over here to inspect the work going on that is still being tied down inside the water tank let me tell you, this is where I get really pleased with the help. And I'll show you what's going on here, show you how I instructed them to do this, and then the idea of the help as well. Hold on. So what I instruct them to do is take a full length piece of steel and bend it with 90s down in the corners here, as you see. I want no joints. What's that? I want no joints at all down in any corner nowhere not up in these corners not in the bottom corners I want him to adjust these up he's raising them up power right now to get a good cover of crete onto the bottom side of those but as they were doing this i had left and came back over and i tell you what might might come up with a great idea holding these spaced and everything and tying them up off of the bottom and that was simply go in this hollow block and drive these nails up at the tops here gets his spacing and as well he can tie them holding them up off the floor at the same time so kudos for him for coming up with that little idea so they'll put all this um this grid in this way first and then we're going to come in across the opposite direction up the sides and then we'll start going around coming up this way so he'll get another layer across the bottom coming up the walls right there and then we'll also start going around the perimeter in here and once again he's instructed for no joints anywhere near a corner 
and uh, if you have to put a splice put it somewhere out towards the middle in there so that's good too when you got a splice and it's overlapping doubling out on this long span like this also give a little bit more strength in the wall well it's looking great i'll follow up with him here again in a little bit make sure uh make sure you use your big foot not your little foot get that steel up higher yeah yep there you go all right we'll follow up on this again just a little bit here's my car wash going by see you later car wash and melinda she's got some uh moringa with her here some malunga what you gonna cook with that baby love with the um, banana heart oh some banana heart today yes, and coconut milk and papaya and mongo man life's too good here yes. life's too good you see we have been planting moringa malunga all over this place not only in our lot but out in just out amongst in the subdivision because the locals like to come get it they don't ever plant any they just come rob what's there so uh there's one tree over there that really stays stripped all the time i talked to them today i said i saw that yesterday that the malunga there there a lot and now it's no more it's already stripped so mm -hmm. i know Want to, to every day the parents send children over to get yeah. to get over here at the, at the place and uh i said you know it's funny that they just come take 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 yeah. but they never give and this stuff is so easy to grow we could literally chop this off right here this young piece we could just chop it off get rid of some of the leaves stick it in the soil and keep it wet and it'll grow roots in just days yeah and they they don't they don't cut them back you see all this has been chopped every time you chop it it grows out new growth like this right here and that's your good leaves so they just grab what they can and the trees will just get super tall and uh where you can't even reach it and no new growth but i told melinda you know it's just hard to teach them but let's just plant more trees around and on these empty lots around in here for now and maybe even try to plant some next door where they live and just make it a very ample amount around here so anytime we chop ours back like this stem here when it starts getting taller and we chop it back we'll plant it and new will be growing for the community i wish we could teach it for them to do it on their own but it's just so difficult sometimes so meanwhile i'll show you some other projects that's going on i've got on this uh fence this wall right here joining to the next property i built this fence back years past uh just hollow block fence down low the ground just typical way they do it here and it actually needs to be built taller like the other fence right over there so i've got them extending it up uh just for a little bit more privacy and also we're gonna make a dirty kitchen outdoors right here um, I think it'll be a really nice place for it we've actually already in the fence scored in and put water pipes and stuff in the past for that to be here so I'll end up right down here at this ground off this slab from this outdoor restroom over to that little corner there by him making a dirty kitchen area out here so uh, so yeah, it's great to have a thing like a dirty kitchen when you're having family gatherings and out here in the yard and all that. And especially since our house is going to be up on the second floor, we can have a place over into the corner of the property that people can gather, cook, be able to use the restroom, be able to clean dishes and stuff out here. All the little things they want to do and not put just 100% of the activity right on the doors of our house right there. So it's going to be pretty nice as well. They're over here still cleaning out the trash. Uh, there's just a little bit left remaining there in that pit, but they're starting to get to where it's clean soil, removing that out. And then we're going to dig that down, not as deep as that water tank, but definitely deeper and bigger over here. And we're going to make um, some fish ponds. Of course, we can always grow fish in there that we can eat. We can enjoy feeding them, but it's also just nice to have the ambience of it, you know, just the, the pleasing to the eyes, to see the fish enjoy them uh, to just come out and have that soothing relaxing time of feeding them so that's 
multi-purpose out of that tank right there but i'm going to tell you really most of it's for the ambience i'm not going to lie most of it's for the ambience 